This is November 9th, 2012, and I want to provide some speculative answers to the question, back to Hurricane Sandy one last time, are we ready for another one? So to quote that old Who song, won't be fooled again. On November 4th, 2012, the New York Times asked some really good questions about investment decisions we may now make to help us to adapt to the next Hurricane Sandy. So right off the bat, should people be allowed to rebuild on coastlines? I think the answer is, uh, of course. People have a taste for living in coastal areas. What I want to happen is for folks to have full information of the likelihood of one in a hundred year storms like Hurricane Sandy. If they're now one in five year storms, I want that information to be public. I want there to be GIS maps highlighting which areas would be most severely impacted by these shocks. And I would want both uh, insurance, private insurance contracts, to reflect this risk. If you want to locate in such an area, you should pay a price premium for your insurance. And there should be differential pricing that if you build your house out of materials that are more robust to flooding, you should pay a lower price for that insurance. In terms of the infrastructure in these coastal communities, I think that the mayors need to have, be spending their own money so that they have skin in the game and they have the right incentives to think through how to be a more resilient coastal community. Uh, and again, the prospect of a FEMA bailout creates a moral hazard effect. That uh, better, m more resilient communities are more likely to be built when private it, when city level funds are being used in the cost benefit analysis. The New York Times asks about electricity infrastructure and some of these are both engineering and economics questions. To minimize the probability of, of flooding wiping out the electrical system, should, uh, should power lines be buried? There there's a question of uh, expected value. What's the probability of future storms? What is the cost of burying power lines? And so here, there's just sort of standard economics models of investment under uncertainty, where the two key parameters is, if we invest in underground power lines, where we bury them, how much does that cost? Is there any prospect of that becoming cheaper over time because of technological innovation? And if we have such buried power lines, what's the probability that that was essential for keeping the lights on? What's the probability ex post that that's a good investment? In Lower Manhattan with commercial real estate, should building codes require that electricity transformers be moved to higher floors? I think the short answer is yes, if that reduces the risk of there being blackouts. So I'd like to know why in the past were transformers in the basement? Uh, what engineering problem did that solve? And if we put these transformers on higher floors, what are the benefits and the costs of doing so? And is it the case that we need regulation to create this nudge, or would this happen? Would self-interested, risk-averse building managers do this even if there was no regulation requiring it? What externality would this regulation solve? Is it just inertia? Uh, why do we need regulation to achieve this if everyone hates having the lights, having backup power generation being knocked out? Subways, commuter railways, and road tunnels. Should new systems be developed to block entrances during storms? So again, this is cost-benefit analysis again. If our subways are underground, what systems can be introduced to protect them from flooding? And keep in mind, the water has to go somewhere. So if we have these little sea gates blocking subway entrances, the water is going to be deflected somewhere else. Uh, so one person's solution, one person's adaptation to climate change or to the natural disaster shock poses extra risk to wherever the water is displaced. So we're going to have to combine these blockage systems, sort of like a, a goalie in hockey blocking the puck, and we're going to need drainage systems to get rid of that water of where is it going to go. And there there's going to be discussions of better drainage systems, uh, whether it's wetlands or other investments, to 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 minimize flood risk when these events occur in the future. There's also going to be a question of how you finance these investments. And since New York City mainly benefits from its subway system, I think it should be local te property taxes to pay for this to reduce future quality of life impacts, such as those that New York City experienced with Hurricane Sandy.